Good morning. Thank you for joining us for today's MicroStrat chat. Um, business process and content services, embracing a world beyond the crisis. Um, we are here today with Lisa Cavanaugh, a senior executive here at MicroStrategies and Adam Storch. Um, they're gonna be discussing building resilience to navigate the unknown. Um, Lisa, I'm gonna go ahead and kick it over to you. Thank you very much, Kelly. <clears throat> As Kelly said, my name is Lisa Cavanaugh, and I'm a, I lead the practice teams here at MicroStrategies. And for those of you who may not know us, we are a technology solution provider, and we really focus on enabling modern business by leveraging the technology investments that they have to drive business outcomes. And we really work as a team to focus on the core challenges that organizations are facing today, whether it be how they're going to evolve their standard operating procedures and their core business functions, which will be a core part of the conversation today here with Adam, uh, to make them more resilient and future ready, or whether it's how they're uh, enabling the correct technology resources for those business processes to be as resilient as they can be, and making sure that those technology resources are dynamic and provide the capability and capacity, allowing them to evolve the features and functionalities as their businesses evolve. Or whether it's the analytics that they need to gain the insights and visibility into the business decisions that they need to make their uh, make the priority decisions as uh, their priorities change on a regular basis given these, these times. Um, or whether it's the teams that they need to make sure that they can operate those businesses. The last thing we'd ever want is for organizations not to be able to take advantage of a new feature or functionality because they don't have the resources to operate that. So we really focus on enabling organizations in those core areas. And as I said, today we're here to really focus on that business process side. So Adam, I'm gonna turn over to you. Can you take a minute just to introduce yourself? Sure, thanks Lisa, and thanks Kelly. So uh, my name is Adam Storch. As they said, I run the business process and content services practice. I've been at MicroStrategies for 15 years. I've uh, been doing this for a lot longer than I'd like to admit, um, but uh, really focused on dealing with, as, as, as Lisa said, business process, working with clients in the business process side. We've got a team of not just your normal project managers and architects and like that, but people with the skills to understand business process and work with the clients to, you know, uh, get them to a better place, get them to a, a, a more future ready place with their business processes. That's great. <clears throat> well, I'm looking forward to the conversation, Adam, because I know how passionate you are about working with your customers and helping them. Um, and what I really would love to know and get your perspective to, as we kick off our conversation is, as organizations are really emerging beyond the initial shocks and their response to the crisis and really kind of getting everybody kind of organized, and they're really kind of taking a step back and evaluating where did they stumble and what do we have to do with those core business processes to make them more resilient? What is your perspective on how they do that given the level of unknown that they're walking back into um, with respects to where we are today? Yeah, no, and and it's it's a it's a it's a big question. <laughs> it's a really big question. And again, heading into this, for those people who don't know me, yes, I will get passionate. I will try to keep it slow. I will get harassed for talking too fast. <laughs> so just know that going in, people. This is me, caffeine free, just so we're on the same page. Um, if you look at what we're seeing now, the biggest thing with, if you will, after the crisis piece is the unknown. When we would do normal projects with people there's always figuring out the business process how do we go a b c and the unknown doesn't play as much of a role right in the thought process before this because quite frankly you know it's not like oh i don't know we could have a global pandemic that could send us all home for the next 100 days that would never happen so the unknown becomes a bigger piece of that pie if you look at the pie the unknown becomes a bigger deal and what we're seeing with clients is bigger projects if you will become scarier because it's more unknown you know mm -hmm. what i'm saying so what we find is there's still people doing stuff we're we're doing stuff i just literally right before this 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 meeting i was in a conference going through some business process work with a client and it's just smaller things are chunking up more you know instead of trying to do the bigger piece they're doing the smaller piece um, because again that unknown becomes a bigger deal so from a high level still looking at the business process, still trying to figure out what's there, but spending more time on almost, if you will, chunking things up, you know what I'm saying? That value add piece and focusing more on what the unknown is. Cause like I said, we all know we never conceived of the unknown we're dealing with now, you know? So it's, it's definitely been a, a, a change in the thinking of how people do projects, you know? And do do you find that um, that is 
kind of causing team members to overthink it or do you feel as though it's causing them to uh, make decisions more quickly with respect to you know this this um, <laughs> overwhelming na nature of unknown at this point so so what i will say is we were always in the business process world you're changing the way people work right it's not just swapping out a system and i right. will tell you and i'll probably date myself with this reference a lot of times we felt like the dr fraser crane of the world of technology you know, we would have to be their therapist. It's going to be okay. We're going to change the way you work. Nobody's going to die. There's a lot of hand holding going on. Now, what I will tell you now is there is a little bit more concern, like I said, on the unknown stuff. So people want to move quicker, and some do. Don't get me wrong. Some do move quicker, but a lot of them, there is a little more hand holding. There is a little bit more. We're not going to do the big piece, we're going to do the small piece. Let's get over that hump. You know, I was in a I was in a workshop yesterday with a client. We had 11 people on this workshop, and you could see the diversity in the sense that you had people in that meeting that were ready to go. They're like, "We got to move fast," and you got other ones who were really concerned about that that unknown. You know what I'm saying? So I would say if I were to split it up, more people are trying to move quicker. Okay, but those that are not moving quicker are dangerous in the analysis paralysis. There's a, there's a, there's right. more time spent on dealing with that analysis paralysis. So I'd say you got people moving quicker and the slow people moving slower, if that makes sense. You right, know, they kind so of they get overwhelmed, right? yeah. paralyzed by the unknown. So how do you kind of leverage the lessons that we've learned in the sense that, hey, look, you can only protect so much. The unknown is truly that, it's unknown. So how do you do that to, um, how do you work with your, with your clients and how do you approach it so that you're um, still taking into consideration for the fact that the business process is gonna have to be resilient enough to take on something you might not know, but not doing it in a way to your point that um, you're slowing things down. So how do you kind of use those learnings to apply yeah. to having things go faster? Yeah, no, no, it's a great question. My, my first inclination was to use alcohol, but that doesn't work for everybody. So we have to go another direction. I mean, basically, basically what we have found is people get nervous as things get bigger. You know what I'm saying? As, as you go through the process and the bigger it is, the more unknowns. So like right. yesterday, just like the, like I said, the workshop with 11 people, yes, a great group of people. Um, when we were doing that workshop, when we went through the process that they were dealing with, okay, as we stepped through it, everybody was engaged in the beginning, right? We talked about certain things, document intake and how things get in and, you know, and that kind of, as the process went on, that's when people started to get nervous. As it started to get big, I started to, if you will, lose them. You know what I'm mm -hmm. saying? So what we did is we brought it back to the chunking, all right? We brought it back to the, okay, guys, we're going to go through the whole process, all right? But let's focus on the individual pieces, all right? I, you know, there's a lot of things we don't know. There's a lot of things we do know, okay? Mm -hmm. So let's try to break it down into those finer pieces, okay, and attack those finer pieces. And I will tell you, I, I actually kind of gave that speech because <laughs> I was losing some people, you know, right. and, and it did bring them back. It did bring them back. And what's interesting in the two and a half hours was the whole workshop. Yes, we took a break in the middle, all right. But in that two and a half hour workshop, we had everybody in the beginning and at the end. You know what I'm saying? We had the people in the whole end, end process because what they said to themselves, okay, it is this big, but I get it. We're going to do it in chunks. So I find myself lately, my guys, it's not just me. You know, I find my guys when they're doing the workshops to know that when they start to lose somebody, bring it smaller. And it works. Right. It's not rocket science, but making it smaller gives them a more comfort level on that digestion, you know, to digest the- They can the wrap overall. their heads around it a little bit better. Exactly, because yeah. that's a big thing. Because, come on guys, nobody can wrap their heads around this, right? So it's like, and I think, like, not to bring it all back, but the pandemic has caused that. Nobody, the, the unknown happens. <laughs> right. So we never thought about it, happens. So it's a matter of getting people comfortable with that reality. The reality right. that we're gonna do what we know, we're gonna take care of the risks, we can address and we'll keep it in a manageable size, you know, a manageable approach. So what have you seen as part of the greatest impacts uh, to organizations, to their standard operating procedures? What did, where, did, where did a lot of their processes break down? Um, well, other than the grossly obvious, what do you mean I can't walk over to this guy and get it signed? I love that one. That was yesterday's thing. Yesterday, <laughs> it, was, it was, we were talking about a process, an approval process, okay? Mm -hmm. And I said, so how'd you do it before the pandemic? And they literally said to me, well, we picked it up and I walked it down to the second floor and I handed it to them and they signed it. I'm like, 
It's very 90s of you. Um, so, you know, so the, the, they didn't have the full tolerance for the disruption of remote behavior. You know what I'm saying? Right. And I think that's the biggest thing. And because they didn't have that, what happened is, you know, and this is where it gets good too. A lot of the places, not just my, my team from yesterday I was talking to, um, didn't have the ability to do remote because of the security needs or because of various things going on. And so what happened is the vacuum showed up. Business needs to happen. Deals need to close, guys. We can't stop closing, not us, but I'm saying, you know, our clients, okay? Right. And so they started doing things that were things they wouldn't do before. They wouldn't do these things before the, 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 the pandemic because they're worried about compliance. Now their priorities are staying, keeping the business going. So then they faltered by doing maybe a little insecure if you know what i mean you know so so they did things they maybe shouldn't have done or wouldn't have done before so we have found that our role is both business on the process side but also technical to secure those processes you see what i'm saying so our role you know they're like i gotta get this contract signed so they're emailing things in, in a non-secure way or they're dropping documents in places that aren't locked down so we found that some of our engagement with clients has been literally tightening things up you know, so some of them are process based, the engagements, others are just tightening up what they're doing because they've got to do business, you know, so our role right. has evolved on some of our clients, you know. So what's some of the biggest impacts of the fact that roles that they never anticipated being remote before now, because we've all had remote workers, you know what I'm saying? But the, mm -hmm. the fact that the entire workforce was really out there and people that never really were designed mm -hmm. to work remotely now were forced into that. Yeah, it's, and core it's core the core extent of the remoteness. It's, it's, it's almost like new roles are created, you know what I'm saying? Because right. th certain roles weren't needed before. Nobody conceived of those roles, okay? Now, all of a sudden, those roles exist. Or better yet, roles are cut off. So I no longer hand it to my admin who goes off and gets it signed. Guess what? You've got to get it signed. So it's both a matter of roles have, in, have, have been created. Roles have been, if you will, they disappear. And a role of a person in a process has expanded. You see what I'm saying? Because now they have to do a little more to accomplish the objective. Mm -hmm. And the role that somebody else was doing to get that process going has disappeared, you know? And I think one of the things that has to happen, and we've seen this, and again, I, I keep bringing it up, but it's fresh in my mind because of yesterday, is that's what we're going with them is identifying roles. They're doing stuff right now because they got to keep going. OK, and we're working with them, you know, mostly yesterday uh, to figure out what roles are they accidentally created by virtue of the situation. All right. And what is the SOP on that role and what has the expansion of roles been? OK, for those people that need to get things done. You know what I'm saying? So it's, exactly. it's, a, it's an interesting situation about the, again, new roles, changing roles and then helping them document that because a lot of these guys are in a regulated environments. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And so part of what we've got to do is make sure that they've got these SOPs on how these things work. All right. And then and then help them put, you know, boundaries around even those, you know, as we go through that. So what about some of the what about some of your other customers that may have um, had challenges with respect to um, their workers that were kind of in the field and the processes that, that they kind of took for granted before of how they may have worked that may have been maybe more paper based that they kind of took things to an office somewhere and things like that. Did you see uh, any impacts there? <laughs> We <laughs> we had a we had a project fire drill last week. I had a client that we were working with on a process, like you're saying, where they had field workers, okay, and these field workers would go to locations, they'd take pictures and fill out a form, okay, and uh, it was a relevant project. Uh, COVID hit, okay, and everybody disappeared, all right, and then suddenly suddenly realized we still need to go to these locations, we still need to take pictures, we still need to do these things. But now I've got to do it in a more safe way, if you will, with less, uh, you know, more social distancing situations. So there's been a spike in a couple of clients of the world of, you know, everything's happening from here. Right, guys? OK, so the, the phone just right. dove in and, you know, we've got a couple of projects kicking off where literally the conversation is about the tech is no longer walking around with their laptop. OK and all this other stuff, or bothering other people. They literally walk around with their phone, taking pictures and filling out a form on their phone. You know what I'm saying? And driving the whole process. So the remoteness still exists, 
but when that tech gets to the location, he or she is alone. So they don't have the help they used to have. So now, you know, when they go to these places, because of the change, you got the field guys that got to do the work and they don't have assistance. There's nobody there to help them out. So they've got to do everything right there. Okay. And I think that expansion, because you've got the need to get the information, you've got less humans around there, and these technicians are even more remote. Okay. There needs to be more intelligence around that process. There needs to be more or an easier ability to grab that information. So this app, this 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 project went from this to this because of the fact they need to do these other pieces. You know what I'm saying? The business objective is still there, but there's nobody in these, these little locations except them. They got to do it all. How do we make that easier and smoother for them? You know, and there is no network. It's cellular. You know, so right. it's a interesting. It's an interesting dynamic because they never they never conceived of that. You know, and it's like I got my phone in the hotspot. I got the laptop. Can I just have the phone, please? And, you know, we went through that aspect of trying to make it, you know, tighter. And it's forcing us. It's forcing micro strategies to evolve. I mean, like I said, you know, to everybody when we started, I've been doing this for a long time, you know. And over the years, we've evolved the technologies we've used. You know, we are not doing the same deployments we did 15 years ago. We're not using the same software we used 15 years ago. I would say that while we've evolved, the crisis has also pushed our evolution. You know what I'm saying? It's required okay. us to do a little more, a little quicker. You know what I'm saying? In terms of evolving, which has been actually pretty good for both us and our clients. <clears throat> so to that point, you mentioned a lot of different, you know, different technologies in that space. Has the technologies, what role has technology played really in helping us respond uh, to helping organizations, you know, make their business processes more resilient? Um, I think, you know, the technologies have been there to some extent but they haven't been capitalized on. They haven't been utilized the way they can be because you know people weren't forced to think about them. So your 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 SaaS offerings, you know, as again, we are, you know, enterprise content management or content services if you will, right? The players that are in that space that do that type of work, the 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 cloud-based solutions, those guys were really thought of as I'm just going to share content with you. Isn't that lovely? Okay? No. Now they've got no choice but to try to juice those. You know what I'm saying? So when we talk about, yeah, we told you these cloud-based things can do more than just store your documents. They can be part of the process. Ears are opening up a lot quicker. You know what I'm saying? Did a workshop late, uh, late last week where a client that was hesitant on going down the road with some of these cloud-based content services as their central repository, they thought about them as just a, now like, so Adam, what were you saying before about that idea about them being part of the workflow and I can do these things and like that? I'm like, so I did the same demo I did two months ago, three months ago. And wouldn't you know, I got a lot more questions and responses on that. I don't know. I'm sure it was just, you know, my, the shirt I was wearing that day. But I did that same demo <laughs> for the sure. months ago. And it was like, oh, that's adorable, Adam. Not last week. Last week, it was like, show me the darn demo and tell me how we break this out. So there's also an openness so the technology's kind of been there. There's new technologies mm -hmm. coming out, sure. The technology's kind of been there, but now people are also more open to listen. You know what I'm saying? I know I can be a very shy, quiet person, so sometimes when I'm presenting it, it doesn't come across, so I apologize for that. But again, when I did it, I'm pretty sure it was in February when I did that present. I apologize, I'm trying to remember. It's like February when I did that presentation. It was like, you know, they're a long time client, they were very polite, they listen, have a nice day. No, last week you would thought I had invented fire, okay? so. So I would say that technology evolved a little, but people are more open to using the technology in other ways. You know what I'm saying? And they're being so, forced so, to do so by virtue of circumstance. So you would say that the the, uh, the disruption of the crisis really allowed them to view technology in a different way and really embrace it differently than they may have in the past. Yeah, I, I don't know if I'd say allowed or required. Required. <laughs> I'm just saying. Open their minds a little bit to how they should be using it. We'll, we'll be nice and friendly and say, it allowed them to open up their minds and be freer about the uh, the whole idea. No, I think they got the you know what scared out of them. They have to do right. work. They still got to get business done. Okay, business doesn't stop just because this crisis happens. You know what I'm saying? And so it allowed yeah. people to be more comfortable. I know another client, or I'm sorry, prospect, who will be a client, um, was telling me that when they first approached their users on the cloud-based thing, they got pushback. Right, they got pushback on a pure cloud-based ECM type of solution. 
not anymore. No, now, you know, he, he's had the feedback and now it's like, Adam, we, we need to sit down and we need to talk about this stuff. So it's definitely forced people to think more about some of these, you know, some of these other technologies, you know, let, let, let them do what they can do, you know, so. So I'm going to pause for one second, Kelly, are there any questions that the, the audience may have or you might have for Adam? Yeah, we actually had a couple come in. Um, the first one, process and content has been around for a long time. How is it different now? How should we think or approach them differently in a world full of uncertainty? What, what I would say is, I think, from my perspective, process and content have also merged more. So before, you had process, it did its thing, and then you had content that went along for the ride. You, you know what I'm saying? And now what I find that if I look at even the, like I said, the ones I've been talking about lately, the crisis, because you can't as easily put your hands on stuff like you were used to doing, right? You were used to how you did things. You're forced to do it a different way. And the process and the content are merging more. So in other words, um, you know, the content before you would lay your hands on the file cabinet, you lay your hands on your shared drive, you lay your hands on certain things very easily. Now there needs to be more thought in how you're sharing these things. There needs to be more thought on how the process works with the content. So we have found that these things are have merged more together. E even so, if I may, even so, you know, where some of the content becomes process and what i mean by that that sounds like a whole marketing so i apologize but you know if you think about it you know you route around a document to get approval right well now at times that process isn't the document it's the actual process going around so your your task screens if you will i go to a task screen and i'm not looking at the document i'm looking at the data in that process mm -hmm. you know what i'm saying and because i don't need to memorialize that to the end the old way was route the expense report around route the you know the pieces around now it's route the data around so we're finding that while process and content are coming closer together because they've got no choice we've even seen content turn more into process you know and then that content becomes something at the end of the process so when i'm done reviewing and approving it then you know it, it then is memorialized and stored for later use you know what i'm saying so i would say the crisis has had the content and process come closer together and it has forced us to think more about the process than the content okay because of how we get that stuff around so how has process and content become more adaptive or evolutionary adaptive and evolutionary wow these are big words for a guy like me um <laughs> I, I i would say that the evolution of process now is because we're forced to do more of it electronically you know what I'm saying? So I would say the crisis has forced us to think about processes more than we ever have. You know, some basic processes that we took for granted when we were in our offices together, okay, can't work, all right? So I would say the crisis has made us think more about process. I think it has forced us to do process um, it has taken clients, back to my joke about being the psychiatrist or Fraser Crane of the, of the of the world, it's called to be more therapeutic with them, to get them through the idea that, yes, you didn't need a process before. Before you could do things in a certain manual way or even do an email, can't do that more. You have to embrace the idea of process. So it is more the crisis has caused us to think more about process because we're forced to do more things in a more you know, cloud-based or, you know, online approach. You know what I'm mm -hmm. saying? And so the evolution is more taking more advantage of it and people realizing, you know, they had no choice. You know, I don't know if the products have thoroughly really evolved in the last three months, if you will. You know what I'm saying? I think what's evolved is people's comfort level or requirements to do more process work. You know, hopefully that get close to answering the question that you're talking about. So Adam, I think just to kind of, you know, kind of um, repeat back what I've heard you say. It's like from your perspective, really, that process and content have merged together in, in an adaptive and evolutionary way to really meet the demands of the crisis. I mean, you've said multiple times they had they had no choice, you know, so it, it <laughs> yeah. forced them to really adapt that. And that's really what you really the power of what you guys do is helping organizations do that. 
Yeah, and and that and that's and that's a, that's a tough job because you know change is scary for everybody to begin with. I mean, it's it, it it's been interesting. I mean, our role is is is, is a very serious one. When we might very serious is you know changing the way people work is scary enough. Okay, we all know there are very few people on this planet that embrace the idea of change. They want to say they embrace the idea of change, but there are very few people that really embrace the idea of change. And with the crisis, they've been forced to. So right. it's 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 a scary thing. So our roles, and we've had we've had internal meetings about understanding this and making sure we work with our client. It really is almost a therapeutic thing. I don't know what to tell you. It's like they're in a stressful situation because they've got to do this. Okay, now they're dealing with change, and our role is to get them through that. Our role is to help so them. Just, you know, get through that. So just a base on you mentioned before, one way you're working with customers differently is really kind of making sure you're breaking things down into digestible pieces. Are there other ways that Maybe customers are engaging you guys differently than they may have before in the past because of that uncomfortableness. Well, it's it's funny. One of the byproducts, and and this may be a testament to just who we work with lately. You know what I'm saying? But one of the interesting things is because of the, the you know the, the the chaos that's going on, all all the insanity that's going on, people you know have on a family level bonded more, right? Everybody's like, oh, how is everybody doing? How are you doing? How is this doing? You know. Our clients are almost bonding more with us, if you will, and even the prospects. They're even more focused on partnering. You know what I'm saying? I would say a lot of our clients. We've had some clients for a lot of years, okay, um, and and it's been and that's, that's of course a nice thing. Don't get me wrong, we love that. And and we've got some clients going on recently, okay. But I will tell you that interactions with these clients and prospects, they're definitely more partner focused there you know it's 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 you know there's there there they reach out to us not just to do the solution and get it done it's almost like you're a member of my team you know what i'm saying they're okay. more because the crisis brought families together they have brought friends together they've kind of brought us with our clients together you know i i have conversations when they reach out to us i you know i don't mean to sound whatever you know forgive me mushy i don't know how to say it but 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 they they're looking more from a partnering perspective they're not yeah. as much as Adam, I have this business problem. Go solve it. Okay, have a nice day. No, there's more conversations about working together. And that's that's how we work, so it's always good. But I, it seems the pre-sales conversations are more that approach. You know, less, do you do these 10 things? What is your price? Sounds great. All right. It's more almost interviewing us, if you will. And, I, and I, that's great because that's how we work. So it's definitely right. more of a teaming approach. There's definitely more of, of that going on. And I think the crisis has a lot to do with it. You know, how many emails did you use to end with stay safe and healthy? Right. 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 You know? It's humanized us a bit yeah, and yeah. how we work together. And that's helped because we all know in any project, there's always a bounce every now and then, you know, mm -hmm. and the bonding you have with these people helps you get through any bounces. You know what I'm saying? Right. Um, so I think that that helps the overall team and helps success because if you're all on the same team, you all have a vested interest in making it successful. That's one of the big things we always find with projects. If you know, you, you can't have this non-invented here thing. You know what I'm saying? Getting the team together, they all have to own this thing. It's a lot higher likelihood of success. So. Yep. So Adam, we've talked a lot about resiliency today, and in some of my other conversations with the other practices, um, we talked about a bit about this concept of a chaos monkey um, mm -hmm. and how we inject disruption. What's your <laughs> perspective on that from a business process side? Um, there's no chaos in process. What are you talking about? There's, 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 you just there's use no the word. <laughs> I, and, 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 and I tell you, you know, when we go through our processes, right, there, there's, there's an aspect where, of course, you want to figure out how it's going to look, right? And the problem is a lot of people, when they do that, they just say, happy path. You know what I'm saying? Our objective and what we end up doing is injecting the, the what if scenarios. You know what I'm saying? That what about this? The challenges. If we don't challenge that process that they've outlined, we haven't done our job. Okay. Mm -hmm. Because the happy path is wonderful, but you know, the human feces hits the rotating oscillator when the happy path doesn't happen. Okay. <laughs> and I think that, you know, introduction of those disruptors as you're going through the process right. is where you really can see the, you know, test the future, uh, future readiness, if you will of the process and i think that's that's a big deal and what i'll tell you is because of the pandemic we were not met with as much defensiveness 
So when we would do that in a process and I'm up on, on a whiteboard now doing it with my surface, but when I'm up there on the whiteboard, you know, back in the day doing that stuff, you'd see a little defensiveness. You know what I'm saying? When I would throw a monkey in, if you will, mm -hmm. or throw an issue into that thing. Yeah. Now, when I do that, you don't get the same reaction because people are like, yeah, anything can happen. I get it, Adam. You know what I'm saying? It's like, yeah. so it, it it's good because it allows us to do those tests on the process. It allows us to, to see if this thing is really ready to happen. You know what I'm saying? And have them embrace the possibility that things may not go great. You know what I'm saying? So it allows us to do more future ready work, if you will. You know what I'm saying? Because okay. I love when people, you know, they give me a workflow diagram and said, okay, here's our process. Assuming nothing goes wrong, right? Yeah, hello, yeah. what does that ever happen? I'm like, you know, right. so that's that's part of it. You know what I'm saying? You'd be able to introduce those challenges and and allow them to embrace the idea of those challenges. So this is it fair to say that you, meeting, right, Lisa? This is a five-hour meeting, right? I'm just kidding, everybody. Absolutely. Just kidding. <laughs> so just is it fair to say that, like, just lost yeah, exactly. It is dropped. <laughs> <laughs> so I guess it's fair to say that you know that you you strive to be their chaos monkey. Um, in a matter of speaking, yes, yes. I don't wear the outfit, although I've been accused of stuff. Um, yeah, but sure. <laughs> exactly, exactly, exactly. But we have to, like I said, you know, it, you know, people, people by and large are looking for the happy path. You know, when we do these processes and, and that's adorable until it goes wrong, you know, and, and, and if you look at, so it's that 80, 20 rule, right? 80% of your, your, your time is spent on 20% of the activities because those 20% of the disasters, you, you, you know what I'm right. saying? So I'm like, that's a big, that's a big deal. So, you know, it, I will say, like I said, and it's funny you should say that because I'm, I'm just thinking about it more the last few meetings. It really, really has been more welcoming, if you will, by them when we interject those issues. You know, well, to your point, it's, 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 oh, like, we're very defensive. You know, they're like, ah, that never happened. <laughs> yeah. To your so point. <laughs> so um, I love your energy, Adam. Love the conversation. Uh, so one of the things I like, you, you said a lot today for I think people to kind of take away with them. If you had to really summarize and say from what you've experienced um, in working with customers over the last three months, you know, what kind of advice or takeaways would you give them uh, as far as the lessons that that they could make sure they're learning and, and moving forward as they look at their processes? I would say, and it's easier said than done, but it's a big deal. You need to embrace and recognize the unknown and don't spin on it, okay? I would say that it is okay to go smaller and get going. In other words, don't think big, it's okay. You wanna talk big, I get it, think smaller, okay? And then the last piece, again, don't be afraid to, as you so elegantly said, inject the chaos monkey. Mm -hmm. You need to do that because look what the heck happened three months ago. So right. one, understand the unknown is going to happen and don't let it spin you out of control. All right. Two, go off and make sure and recognize smaller is okay. Chunk these things up. Okay. Um, and, 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 and three, introduce your own chaos monkeys. Because there's a lot of people that didn't do that, and wow, did they show up in March? Yes, they did. <laughs> Kelly, any other final questions for for Adam? No, I think you know, I think you answered all the audience's questions, and I think it's been a great conversation, very insightful. Thanks so much, Adam. Thanks, everybody. Thank you. Thanks, Have Bye. a great day.